Thanks for joining us at the Clive Barker Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to the imagination of Clive Barker. In episode 448, uh, Ryan is joined by Lori, Catalina, and Joe to recap and do a Q&A game show for experience points. How much will the players remember about our Dungeons & Dragons campaign, Jericho Squad 77? This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art, but Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over the Etsy shop to buy one of his original paintings or books. Follow the link in the show notes or click the side banner and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. Check out the Eclipse and Tulips recently revealed on his Facebook page. There are some paintings on his Etsy shop to check out. Mother and Child 2, The Stargazer, The Folk Singer, The Pearl, Top of the World, and don't forget about his books, The Chimney Sweep's Tale and Celebrate Imagination. Welcome to episode 448 of the Clyde Barker Podcast. And we're doing something different. We haven't done this as a separate episode before, but we're going to do kind of a Jericho Squad Q&A sort of a deal. Uh, so you guys, the, the ones who showed up, will actually get experience points for all the questions that you can answer. Um, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, you're it'll still put you ahead of anybody who didn't come, so that's good. All right, so... I guess, but first of all, we can start out, uh, we'll introduce ourselves. Lori, if you want to go first. Hi, I'm Lori. Uh, I previously played Zoe, but uh, now she's Anastasia. Yeah. And I'm Ryan, I'm the DM. Uh, I am Catalina, I play Musette. All right. And um, so what have you guys been up to lately? Lori, what have you... What's been going on with you? Not a whole lot, actually. Uh, thankfully, it's been so far a fairly quiet spring. Um, so we don't have to worry about hail like last year. But mm -hmm. um, other than that, not a whole lot, because I'm kind of in a holding pattern for this year for cons. But I did manage to get to one, so that's that's better than none. Was that the Chicago one? Uh, no, Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. Um the uh days of the not days of the dead what what was that yeah it was days of the dead was it okay days of the dead atlanta yeah there was also a days of the dead in chicago that always confuses me okay so, well cool i think um, they're franchised is that right Lori? days of the dead yeah like yeah, they do a yeah. bunch all over yeah, the place all over the or place all over the US. I, not, and there's there's more than one mad monster party too yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I do have one other con. It's not a horror con that I'll be uh, attending um, on Memorial Day weekend, which is Galaxy Con in Oklahoma City, which is pretty cool. And I did notice that we now have not just one, but two horror conventions in Oklahoma now. So, yay. Oh, really? And I, I've been yeah. I've been begging Simon to, to see if uh, he can get booked on at one of these. But unfortunately, yeah. one of one of them falls in a month that he definitely cannot come over here because he has other things that he does that particular month. So ugh, unfortunately, it's my birthday month. So mm. Boo. Well, no, what, what are the two? I just know uh, it's um, it's run by that. Um, uh I just call it Oklahoma City Horror Con. Uh, there's uh, there's the Oklahoma City one I think is in July, and then the one in Tulsa, which is a lot closer to me, is in December, oh. right around my birthday. So I wish he could come over, but unfortunately, December. Well, most people's schedules are really busy in December, so yeah, it's a hard what, month for everyone. When we were doing Occupy Midi and and you know we were setting up screenings all over the world for the Cabal Cut of Nightbreed, uh, they Russell specifically asked me not to try to set one up in Fairbanks, Alaska, because he didn't want to come here. <laughs> so we don't ever get anything. We have we have a one thing called Alaska Comic Con, and it's mostly like vendors, and then you get like some voice actors from you know uh, Power Rangers, you know, just random stuff. 
some people who write comics, you know, but not like a bunch of, you know, it's not anything that I could feasibly put together something for, you know, for Hellraiser cast or anything. It would be nice, well, but well, keep your That's keep kind your of a bummer though, because don't you think that they would they would pretty much like take over the whole thing because they would be the highlight then of the event. Yeah. That's well, that's true if there were enough people in Fairbanks that even knew what Hellraiser was. Well, keep you your know, fingers I, crossed because our our one in our Huracan in Oklahoma City started off fairly small i mean yeah. just just a, a handful if that of of celebrities that came to it yeah. and now the regulars that i see at like texas frightmare and and days of the dead and stuff like that they're now coming to both oklahoma city and tulsa and so yeah. you know just if you wait long enough it it gets bigger um because it's wow. it's been years and years and years we i don't think we've ever had a horror con before the last couple of years and of course you know, Before, the Oklahoma City people though they're great like they are real the people who run the convention because I met them down uh, over here in Texas in Bastrop which is almost like in like getting down to South Texas <laughs> maybe not South South but anyway sorry um, and uh, I met them and they went around they actually go to other conventions around close to Oklahoma and they specifically go and talk to all the people that they want like they will stand there they will wait in line and they'll say hey you know we run our we run a con out of Oklahoma blah 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 uh, they're really nice and oh, they do a lot cool. of work and and uh, this year uh, the past couple of years that they've been doing it um, they event they started it off basically at the racetrack uh, there's like a like a some kind of hall there at the mm -hmm. racetrack and they would have it there but now they've gotten big enough that they're actually going to be at the convention center so you can see wow. the progression like That's i said cool. between but nice. be, between the size getting bigger right. and the and the guests you know having mm. more name you know well-known guests now i i see it taking off yeah well I, our problem is we're like three thousand miles away from <laughs> any other state so it's like they, they just the prices of flying to Alaska are a little more prohibitive. It's a little bit more of a barrier to making something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I've been invited to go talk to a rotary club about podcasting in general. Um, so I have to put together a presentation on that. Um, but I don't have a whole lot else going on. Uh, work has been insane, but I've been having to put in a lot of extra hours and I'm salary, so I don't get paid for them. Oh. but uh yeah being able to talk it. about podcasting is is pretty cool because you'll be able to open that up uh, that venue up to other people yeah yeah that's kind of what i was thinking and, i mean um i'm i'm one of the moderators on this group called the alaska podcast network but there's this one guy who runs a dog mushing podcast that's daily and he every day he posts about his you know what episode he's doing and so he's take completely taken over the the group and i've tried to talk to him about it and and i was like hey you know this is you're taking over the group nobody else wants to post anything because it feels like it's just a group for advertising your dog podcast and uh but he's not i don't know he, he's not getting it he keeps saying well nobody listens to you know nobody on the, in this group you know is a good is good for my advertising anyway like well then stop doing it it is supposed to be for helping each other with podcasting stuff not an advertising platform but anyway somebody came in and asked if there was anybody there that could come talk to their rotary club about podcasting in fairbanks and so i was the only one that replied but yeah we'll see how that goes um what else is going on i mean on? you're I very guess... knowledgeable about it especially since you started doing it back before it was even popular it's only become <laughs> yeah. popular fairly recently so you really did build something from the ground literally from the ground up back when there and... was there wasn't even like interest in it um yeah, which thanks. is pretty commendable and, and i i could definitely because i stepped in a lot of uh pitfalls you know because i didn't know what i was doing and so i could stop people from making a lot of the mistakes that that we made starting out like mm -hmm. um you some certain podcast hosts and stuff like that that are not good 
but yeah um well how about you catalina what have you been up to i you know you guys are always doing a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so we filmed the new death world proof of concept yeah uh that was and that's different from the one that you had for the kickstarter or the um for the not kickstarter the other one uh yeah we usually use indiegogo indiegogo yeah um, you because you had a different trailer on indiegogo from the one that you filmed yeah okay uh, a lot changed um so that was interesting uh joe's gonna have a work print or the goal is to have a work print done by um by frightmare texas frightmare weekend which is i believe next or the weekend of like the 17th, 18th, 19th. Um, he's going to have a work print by then. Of May? Uh-huh. Yeah, Whoa. of May. Uh, well, we found that if we take too long in between projects, then we kind of like don't really, you know, like sometimes you take a break or if you just take a nap, you know, and you intend to nap for like yeah. 30 minutes, but then it turns into a three-hour nap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happens to be yeah. okay at least Lori's nodding yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I know this does mean. happen <laughs> okay. yeah um yeah it's kind of like that but with but with um but with projects so it's best mm -hmm. to if you're going to take a break take a very very short break otherwise your short break turns into a long break yeah no i understand um yep so that and then also um i work at a um i work at a dine-in uh theater um, in Arlington and yesterday my uh, my boss came up to me and was like hey you know since you're like the horror person do you want to uh, start um, doing like a monthly horror screenings so I am started putting that together last night yeah I saw that on Facebook that's awesome that you get to do that yeah it could be really really fun I think I'm going to stick with more like anniversaries and normal things this year yeah. and then maybe next year we can start doing really weird stuff we we used to have an, a dine-in movie theater thing but it burned down do you do you uh is it is yours a chain or is it like a local one uh no it's a very small chain because the person who owned or started studio movie grill yeah he left and then he like bought, he like let all of his stuff get bought out. And then he left for about a year and then he came back and started a new chain of dining oh, okay. theaters. Gotcha. Is it um, cool? Is it, is it hard? Do you, do, do, um, do the servers have to like go up and down stairs with the trays of food and stuff? Uh, ours is really small, so not ours, but, um, like okay. my manager, he's been at, he's been in the one in Chandler, Arizona, and he said it's huge. And oh. that, yeah, so that one in Chandler, they do have like a crap ton of stairs and like, it's so big. They have a dumb waiter to put the food up and down. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm a bartender and I'm not, I'm not going to be a server. I don't yeah, have the patience yeah. for that. I don't even have the patience for bartending anymore. <laughs> like if someone doesn't know what they want i'm like i'll be back and then i go and yeah. do something else and come back when they're ready to be an adult and make a decision <laughs> yeah wow so that's so what are, are you are, are you going to put any of your movies in there uh i was told that yes we can uh i'm kind of think i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't because it's only once a month and it's oh, already yeah. made, so that means it's only, I mean, we only have like seven screenings, that means. Could you pair the but, torturer with like another, with another uh, larger movie that's like maybe only an hour and a half? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking feature? maybe something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also like I can probably make our own trailer packs <laughs> to play in front of the movie. So that way I can be, you know, oh, I can yeah. go, I still go ahead and add in, um, you know, stuff yeah. about little spark films and it's uh and it's the 40th uh what 40th 84 yes it's the 40th anniversary of uh the toxic avenger the original toxic avenger oh yeah so uh you know we, we're definitely going to be able to do something around that because the remake the remake has premiered but the it hasn't been announced oh the release hasn't been announced 
So is it going to, I'm sure it's going to be on Troma now, but is it also going to have like a physical release? Uh, oh, the remake is actually probably not going to be on Troma now immediately because it's by Legendary. So it's actually a very oh. like large budgeted, it's a major motion picture. Oh, really? Um, so it's supposed to get a wide, I mean, we're hoping, we're assuming it will yeah. get at least a wide release. Um, it has um, Peter Dinklage is playing the uh, Toxie, the monster, Toxie right, Avenger. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, Elijah Woods in it, Kevin Bacon's in it. Like they have like top tier actors in it. Wow, cool. Yeah, I'm. I'll have to go see that when it comes out. All right, so you guys want to get into our questions? Uh, so this one probably I'm going to have to answer this one. It's from, uh, Val 9,000 on discord says, uh, how many Jericho squads are there? And unless you guys happen to know if you've written down any of the, the all the ones that I've mentioned, then you might know, but I'm kind of guessing I probably should answer that one. I'm assuming there's at least 78. <laughs> because there has been mention of a 78 yeah and we're 77 so, <laughs> so the jericho squads have a high mortality rate so there's actually only about between uh between 10 to 12 at a time but every time one gets wiped out they add a new number instead of just you know reusing the old number so like squad four which is from you know the fugue that's that uh musette was a part of a while ago um when they went to the to the hell uh the the false hell and they got wiped out you know if they ever reform they're gonna be probably like 79 or something so yeah it's like between 10 and 12 at a time um unfortunately uh, and well, and technically your your group got wiped out, but all got resurrected again. So, so you get to keep your number because you're the same people for the most part. Um, uh, I don't, I guess we get to keep our number since you know one was still alive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Technicality. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, Ralph Ralph survived. <laughs> And uh, well, Ralph and and also um, Richard, I think Richard survived too. Yep. Uh, so, and it's it's been a long time, so we'll kind of recap the game, and I'll start asking questions to see what you guys remember. Uh, so, way back in, and just whichever one of you, you know, if you know the answer, you can either shout it out or raise your hand or however you want to do it. But uh, way back in December 2020, we had an episode zero. Uh, and the point was to learn how the game works and to test out Roll20 and Zoom and stuff like that. And uh, so, but story wise, do you remember what happened in that episode? I remember all the Did newbies we... were kind of kind of confused as to who we were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had that uh, dream where we were kind of like meeting each other's characters in the dream, but That's we didn't. Right. Everybody, what is it like? Zoe and Ralph met, and then you yeah. set and Shakespeare met. Yep, and then and then you all kind of get thrown together into this dream. That's right. So that that that'll be fifty in points. a cave, weren't we in a yeah. cave? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that was um, uh, that was Cassius Breyer uh, put that all together. But you didn't know who he was at that time. Mm -mm. Okay. And Anastasia. All right. Um, yeah, I'll give you both points for that one. Sorry, I'm typing. Okay. All right. And um so then why did Musette want to leave uh England and leave the fugue and go to the uh and go to uh the the uh Second Dominion? 
I honestly don't remember. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You'd think that I know because it's yeah. about my character, but I. <sighs> yeah. So um, th there was a lot of complicated motivations for her, but uh, a big one was that the fugue that they've sort of say, hey, Joe is here. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the big one is that the the fugue that uh, that she was a part of kind of felt a little bit like a uh, like a um, a tomb, you know. It's just kind of a way of just remembering the people that used to be, and that was sort of depressing. And and she so she liked to get out and see the world and and uh, and play her music and and see new places. And she'd seen just about everywhere on the earth, and and uh, and it seemed like the that the second dominion and the other dominions might be a sort of a similar place to the fugue and you know were people who could do magic and people who aren't necessarily cuckoos and stuff like that so that was kind of the reason all right well welcome joe uh so let's see here thank you i don't remember <laughs> okay that was important thank you uh, so Ralph and Zoe were originally part of Squad 43, the Midian detail, uh, digging for relics and for survivors. Uh, can you name any of the other members of Squad 43? Well, there was that guy and um, him. and uh... <laughs> Yeah. I, hmm. Do you remember All any right. of the other members? You... No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So there was there was Zoe and Ralph and Fiddler, Fiddler Bar Barclay, who was a human. Uh, Wembley was the uh, oh, the, yeah. the frog guy, and frog he kind guy. of he yeah you you met up with him again later. Uh, Clarissa was a cat person, and um, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, most of them were killed. Okay. Um, Next question is, uh, what happened to Chertovir's brother, Drovo? What didn't happen to his game? brother? <laughs> yeah. In the beginning of the game, what, what happened to, to Drovo? He was kidnapped. Yay, that's right. He was kidnapped. Do you remember who kidnapped him? Oh, um, not Cassius? Yeah, it was Cassius. That's right. And there okay. was that whole thing with the sword and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And he had to attune to the sword. and. Yep. And that was to secure his position as representative of the First Dominion because he was up again. That was his political rival. Um. So who won the debate in the Isordorexian Council? That depends on I who you're voting for. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just remember everything going to uh, just complete chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and basically that 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 went to chaos because Cassius lost the lost the debate. Um, he he so he was losing the vote because the debate and the vote all happened at the same time. And uh, and well, and because uh, the Jonathan Livingston Seagull forced him to say things that you know made an illusion of his own of his mouth in front of his face that was saying different things than what he wanted to say and he was getting really mad and then the whole thing Those turned into times. a big battle i kind of i kind of think of that as the jerry springer episode because it just <laughs> yeah. kind of developed yeah. into a fist fight <laughs> yeah it was that one went off the rails man yeah and it was on TV. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oops. Yeah, and, and that kind was of, why we ended up getting grilled. <laughs> yeah, it was. It kind of outed the the squad. Um, well, it so, was our opportunity to strike, wasn't it? I mean, it was now or never. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I like to set up these scenarios, not really ex ex expecting a certain way that it's going to end. You know, I just like to see what people are going to do. Um, so, uh, name the yattering that plagued the squad and the previous squad nine when you were in like the false so. hell. I know what we called him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was his name? 
Oh, um, mm. Squally. Yeah, some, 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 no. some that's like pretty that's pretty close. You've, you're, yeah, you you've got that's that's his first name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh. it's yeah, it's Nisqually Flume. Okay. okay. F L U M E. Yeah, and and he's named after Fort Nisqually in in uh, in Tacoma, Washington. We used to go there on field trips when I was a kid. <laughs> And that's and we never called him that. <laughs> we called him everything but that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So the group's big Sorry, dungeon. Sorry, real fast, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, um. I'll just put it in the chat. Okay. To not stop the flow of conversation, I apologize. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, the group's big dungeon crawl took place in which location and based on what Barker's short story? Sorry, which one? The group's big uh, dungeon crawl took place oh. in what what location and based on what Down Clive Barker's Satan. short story? Yeah, Down, Down Satan. Satan. And, uh, and what was the uh, location? Fake hell. Yeah, yeah, the fake hell. It's in the end for extra credit. It would be in the Tunisian desert. Yeah. Yeah. I was getting ready to say Africa and I would have been right. Yeah. Dang it. That's you would right. have been right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yep. Okay. Um... <coughs> Name the power couple of hell and their pet. This is a hard one because even I have to keep looking it up because I forget yeah. sometimes. That the spider that ended up. That was the, the cool spider. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Then he just up and ditched us. But that William. <laughs> William. Yeah. Was William? That's, that's, William that's very, was the spider. It, that's very yeah. close. Willem. Willem. Yeah. Willem. Yeah. That's right, Willem. And I can't, uh, I can't remember the couple's name. Uh, I can't remember uh, the couple's I, I missed that spider. It's spider Magera, had an effect on us more than the couple, I think. Yeah. Magera yeah, and Gaustus. Wait, didn't that spider show up when... When we were in hell. When we were in hell. Yeah. yeah. I remember now. He was a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Until he left us, yeah. I saved him from near and certain doom, I remember. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, what was the name of the hand of the unbeheld uh, that, that he took when he posed as a police investigator? Oh, um, you guys were getting interrogated. Rem yeah, the remember the cop showed up or the, the cop showed up? Yeah. Oh. And he had a name. The name was a little bit of a hint to who he was. Mm. I just remember us not wanting to open the door and trying to buy time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Holly, it was um, a pretty like normal average name. Yeah. Uh, but I can't remember it. His his name was uh, Dexter Handy. That's Dexter right. mm. Dexter means right and hand, so he's the right hand of the of of the god Hapeximendios. Yep. Uh what are the three parts of the god uh that the Aboriginal children are feeding and trying to bring back to life? So the the three it's it's split into three parts. Isn't there hand, heart, and something? Yeah. Yeah, That's I can right. only remember the hands, the heart. What is it? The, it's not the eyes. Is it no. the wings? That's right. The wings. Yeah. The hand of the unbeheld, the wings of Pexamandios, and the heart of the Aboriginal. So I'll give you that to both of you. That's three eighths okay. of an eight piece. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ralph, you got to turn it around. Yeah. Oh, we're getting points. <laughs> I know you're you're tired. Yeah, you're getting experience points for the questions that you can answer. Oh. 
wake up. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's all right. We're almost done anyway. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm I'm on a different. Yeah, I sorry. get it. Yeah, no, I I heard uh, Catalina told us that that you got that you were up until like four or something like that. I didn't get home from set till four. Oh, yikes! Uh, this morning, this morning. Yeah, so it's like an hour drive. <laughs> oh. Over an hour drive. Uh, so there are two things that Richard was in trouble for. Uh, what were they? I remember oh, he had to fight the uh, crab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Killing, oh. killing uh, <laughs> that was a good one. Killing someone he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's close enough. But yeah, he killed he killed someone that had surrendered. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what it was. Uh and yeah. then the other thing I don't remember. But yes, I yeah. do remember the results as well. Yeah, fighting. The other crab. thing he was in trouble from Jericho yeah. for. Uh, it was something that the, his whole mission was based around, and he didn't do it. He was supposed to find uh, Cassius Briar and bring him in, you know, dead or alive. And you you guys kind of just left him in the desert. <laughs> okay. We we aspire to be Bond that. villains. Um, yeah. <laughs> We'll so, just leave him in the desert. We just kind of <laughs> run around across the desert yeah. going day by day. No? Yeah. Uh, what What did each of the dead folk have to face in their afterlife? So the dead player characters, what did they all each have to face? Oh. Um, their worst nightmare. My mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think Ralph died, did he? No, you didn't. No, you were the only no. person. You you missed that conversation. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Ralph and, and Richard survived. I had to have my oh, heart. Okay. Well, I, I almost had my heart weighed, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Mom, mom stepped in like a good mother should. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we had a sliver of life left. So yeah, we didn't die. Just, we yeah. just almost made it. But you you passed whatever. your death saving throws. <laughs> so you were unconscious and and alive and and stable instead of dead. I I remember um I remember um Musette was like shooting arrows in a field or something, weren't you? Yeah, she was in a dream version of the fugue. Um in in the orchard of Lemuel Low. And what what were you and and uh and what were you facing? Do you remember? No, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Zoe, <laughs> okay. Lori remembered more than me. Anastasia. Uh, it it, yeah. it wasn't rabbits, was it? <laughs> For some reason, no. I have rabbits <clears throat> on the brain. <laughs> it, it was zombies, and it was more about her, her no. fear of, <laughs> you know, of the loss of all her people, and and uh, you know, and and the the fugue being like a tomb, and so that's why she had to fight zombies in the in the uh, in the the um in the orchard and i had i had uh crocodiles or something too yeah you had in that that was in hindsight that was way too easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then and then Churduvir, do you remember do you remember what he had to go through no i don't which what, what was his um Drovo showed up in the beginning of it. Because he was also dead. I, I I don't know. I've slept since then. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday was um, so many months ago. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so Chertovir, uh first was heading towards the First Dominion, but then he got pulled into hell uh, by Gaustus and... and uh, and, that's right yeah yep he had okay. to he had to fight Nisqually, Nisqually flume again and uh another demon that Nisqually was bringing over saying that's the guy you know get him yeah i, I remember Gaustus, that part okay okay and gaustus made a warlock pact with him to bring back the body of of uh, cassius briar since you guys kind of left him um yeah and i guess that's the end of our questions did you guys have any questions for me about the game or about what's going on with it? 
Are we going to have to fight the crab again? <laughs> he's, I think that was that, one of the toughest things was fighting that crab. Yeah, he's dead. The the uh, the others, the, the uh, Jericho Squad One members came over and killed him. Actually, it was kind of fun because Rob and I played that all out uh, in uh, in a game that wasn't recorded to see what happened, and even we even got to play uh, Ralph a little bit and and Richard because they got. They got healed and revived and ran over and took shots at the crab and stuff. Um, you know, from a safer distance because they didn't want to. They didn't want to get killed again or get knocked <laughs> out. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and 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 Ralph grabbed Musette and dragged her body to safety also because it was underneath the the creature. And I think somebody, one of you, got eaten. Right. I think one of you was like inside of its mouth wasn't me somebody had I to just, get cut I out i think maybe it was i think that was drovo actually i think it was drovo well, that was eating. yeah 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 um do you guys have any other questions about the what's going on in the campaign <laughs> stuff that i can Did answer anyway. get Bring it on. Made yeah. bones? what's that <laughs> Did Ralph ever give everybody the little birdhouses made of bones? Oh, I don't, I don't remember. remember that. Yeah, Ralph uh, took a, a carcass with him, and you all made fun of him. <laughs> and oh, he, he, yeah, that was another thing that you guys got in trouble for was dragging the carcass of that creature that you know was one of the one of the things that was forced to fight in the Colosseum, like you guys. Oh, the Minotaur Man, right? <laughs> Uh no, after the you fought the Minotaur by yourself, but it was like a big um it was a giant uh lizard creature. I forget what it's called. It's from Infernal Parade. And there was that knife lady too. Yes, Mary Slaughter. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one that she oh, backed yeah, up and, and put her hands up and the, Yeah. Right. And that's how we ended up at the crab. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was nice though. You guys could have just left left him to get to get executed, but you rescued, tried to rescue him. We're not that bad. Yeah, we're marginally bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to see Jericho Squad as a cartoon. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be great. Oh, that reminds me. So I've been collecting Jericho stuff for the game. Now let me grab all my stuff. So, okay, so I have the Prima Strategy Guide. It's hard to see. There we go. There we go. The Prima Strategy Guide and a signed, like, promotional book that's not for any specific, like, console or whatever. And let's see. I've got... This is my original one that I had Clive sign back at when it came out for the Xbox 360 and now I have the Windows version even though I don't have a Windows computer. <laughs> and would that even play on a desktop? Uh I don't know. I guess my brother's going to get a Windows computer next week on Thursday, so we'll find out then I'll try it. And okay, uh, my cool. son, I mean Joel is. And this is the PlayStation 3 version, which we have the PlayStation 3 downstairs in our Airbnb. So I don't, you know, I don't know how often I'll actually play that. But and then I'm getting the Steelbook Xbox 360 version in the mail pretty soon from eBay. Nice. So yeah, I've been kind of getting into Jericho lately, just mainly for, you know, inspiration for this game and stuff. Um, but it's more based on Imagica than anything. I mean, more than Jericho, even. Yeah. Um, so we have a uh, pecan tree in our in our um, front yard. So oh, really? while I've been opening, yeah, while I've been opening pecans, I've just been opening pecans. Like I don't know what I'm going to do with the pecans. <laughs> Um, but at some point, I'll figure that out. Um, but I've been yeah. listening, yeah, to the Imagica that you had sent me. Oh, that's me, awesome. The audio book. All yeah, right. Yeah, it's a lot easier to concentrate because, like, my for some weird reason, when I try to actually read my little paperback book, 
my brain gets scared, I guess, because it's like, oh man, this book is so huge. But the audio book yeah, is easy. Like it, it looks like a cube. It's so huge that it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one there was one time when I was a kid that I was tr when I was in high school, I was trying to read uh, Shogun, you know, the James Clavell novel. I think there's a new series on Hulu about it now, but it that book was like that. It was like a cube, and it was my parents' copy. And so ever as I was reading it, the pages were falling out. And there, and I would put them back, but then there was one time when I dropped it on the floor and all the pages just scattered everywhere. And it was like 1,200 pages. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm done reading that book now. Was that, oh. the, one that, had, <laughs> was that the one that had the miniseries with Richard Chamberlain? Yes. Showtime? Yeah. And, okay. and now there's a new miniseries on Hulu. They're yeah, remaking but, everything. Yeah. Yeah, that old miniseries wasn't bad, but the new one hmm. is the new one can be more violent because it's not for you know it's not for uh 70s audiences <laughs> yeah and network tv right it's on a because it's on a um streaming so it can they can just put a rating on it instead does catalina does your shirt say vhs yes okay all right VHS. I've, I've got a <laughs> night japanese nightbreed shirt nightbreed. And Joe is Days Troma of the Club. Dead. Oh, Days of the Dead. With the Clive's art on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that the that's the same art that they use for Texas Frightmare Weekend, isn't it? Yeah, it totally uh, is. I thought that was I think special it's for Texas modified. Frightmare. Yeah. It's slightly different on the Days of the Dead one. I think there's more detail. Yeah, and I think that it's red and white on the Texas Frightmare one. Yeah. Yeah, but that's cool. Adopted that shirt for me. So, did you go see Clive Barker at that one? Oh no, he wasn't. Was he? He was he in the Atlanta? He wasn't in the Atlanta one. I he think I got this. The... No, well, this isn't new. I've I've had this for a while. I think this yeah. was the one and only time I ever got myself a VIP pass, and Clive was oh, there. Okay. That's right. Yeah, I want to say I, think... I want to say it was Chicago. That was I, probably. I was that the same year that he was probably at at Texas Frightmare Weekend, like 2017, I think? Uh, maybe. I don't remember. I, like I said, I've had this shirt forever. So It feels like it wasn't that long ago, but then you think about it, in 2017 is a long time ago. Yeah, but, you know, we had those two years off, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe, what is that thing? What's what? Like the white thing? Yeah. It's my dog. Oh, oh, now I see. Okay. I've got his, mine his, too. You want to see? His head was turned, so it was hard to it was hard to see what that was. I thought it was like a blanket or something that you were holding. Here's mine. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, they look they look kind of similar. They look another puppy. Yeah. Didn't like that. Dogs do not like true. dogs don't like when you try to force them to look at a screen. The, the funny yeah. thing is, before like, we started oh, no. recording, he was all yeah. all up in here. But then as soon as I <laughs> pick him up, then all of a sudden he's camera shy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I said, Joe's been gone all week. So she's yeah. just been stuck with me. And then I'm going to be uh, gone for another, like two and a half days. Yeah, two, three days. She missed you. What's your dog's name? Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. And, and, uh, Wednesday. and Lori, what's your dog's name? Well, technically, his name is Haldir O'Lorian from uh, Lord of the Rings, but we call him Derp. Derp? Um, <laughs> uh, for, uh, until he became an old dog, we also called him Forrest Gump because he would love to run out the door and make you chase him, and he would run and run and run and run. <laughs> okay. and he, thought it was, he thought he was having fun. Like, oh, yay, yeah. we're having a good time. He, yeah. he ended up getting hit by a car once, and that still oh. didn't teach him anything. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay, I can understand the derp then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Covered well, I here. guess that's it then if we don't have any other questions. Um, but yeah, this was fun. We should yeah, catch up more, you. especially if we have like multiple months in between episodes. That would be helpful for us because obviously we forget a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in an episode like this, we don't have to have everybody. Um, we can do we can do it with uh, with just a couple or whatever, but 
Yeah, then it's not as much pressure to get the whole group together. Although it seems like uh, it seems like Matt always works on the weekends, so we might he might not ever ever become be able to come to these. Yeah, uh, now that I'm working again, I usually they usually schedule me on Saturdays. I asked for this next one. I just asked for it off. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but like I know for Joe and me, we have our set day off is Sunday. Like oh, okay. But I don't know. I don't know how that works out for other people because you know most people only get the two days off a week. Yeah, y'all's, uh, y'all's schedules are busier. Yeah, than ours. we we can mostly try to make them on Sundays. Um, I don't know that if works. that helps. Matt. Yeah, 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 and because Jose also has he works like every third Saturday or something now, and they keep changing that on him all the time. He's always like, I told you which Saturdays, but then. I put him in my calendar and then, and then they change his schedule. And so it, you know, I sort of stopped putting him in my calendar because of that. All right. Well, uh, thank you. And this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us. And we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast, wherever you find audio show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The BarkerCast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff. Pick an episode topic and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the SpeakPipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.